Hey guys, I'm back with another video and we have semi-annual sale action today. Uh, today was the first day in store. Uh, so I went to the stores in my region. Um, I got there right when it first opened um, and did the thing. So yeah, uh, let's see what was going on. Uh, it wasn't too busy. The first store I went to, so the first store was the only store I bought anything. The second, the other two stores, I was just looking for 75% off finds, uh, and there were none to be had in terms of home fragrance, so nothing to be purchased there. So this was all at the first store, uh, and the first store had heaps of 75% off candles. Oh my god, it was crazy, and I was like, oh my god, this is awesome. I was like, is every store going to be like this? And no, it wasn't. It was just that one store, um, and it wasn't like a fancy, um, like more upscale mall type of situation, uh, but they still had quite a bit of uh, stock or inventory of 75% off candles, uh, so I was happy about that uh, they had the perfect spring the perfect autumn they had uh, goldenberry mistletoe uh, tree farm um, winter candy apple candy emporium um, what what else did they have they had um, the top shelf elf like a uh, quite a bit of like candle day leftovers for 75% off uh, plus my mother who was with me had a 20% off coupon so like the 75% off candles came out to be like $4.99 uh, which is great like that's well below candle day prices so I was really stoked about that uh, so we had some of that and then um, basically all the new candles that got imported in for semi-annual sale um, there were a number of those that I wanted I have all of it here in a really massive haul um, and we'll get right into it so so yeah, uh, let's start with the blends. So it's fun because like semi-annual sale now is truly just another floor set of new products, but they also, in addition to that, clearance stuff out from the past season. So there's still stuff for you to buy, like even if you've bought everything for the past season, because they still release new products for it. So um, it's kind of like a two-in-one new floor set plus a clearance event so um it's still it's still nice in terms of getting newness in so i appreciate that and they still um do like the weird blends which at first it's just kind of like who asked for those fragrances to be blended together uh but it's just like i appreciate that they still do weird blends and mashups like that there's like a novelty to it that i enjoy that i'm like you know what i'll still try it and burn it and see how it does and see if these blends work well together or not um most of the time they do not but there's some instances i'm trying to think what my favorite blend was to date I would probably have to say the cinnamon spiced vanilla plus Paris Cafe was pretty bomb. I wish that would actually return. Uh, I really enjoyed that one. And the Black Cherry Merlot plus Marshmallow Fireside was like very similar to Radiant Red Maple. So I like that. But then the real Radiant Maple came out afterwards. So it kind of like made that, rendered that useless. Uh, but still enjoyed that one. I think those are the, the two. Oh, Margaret Peach plus Strawberry Pound Cake, which was very similar to Peach Meringue from back in the day. I really enjoy that too. So they're like, despite most of the blends being weird and being one and done there's still some hidden gems in those blends uh so without further ado let me get into this season's blend so we have hello beautiful and black cherry merlot um hello beautiful came out i believe once um as a three wick when hello beautiful first came out and i still have them in my stash uh and then it's blended with black cherry merlot i would have to say the labels this time around are pretty cute i like the sort of like uh vintage drawn print mixed with the gradient and then it just has a plain silver lid on it these are 24.95 and of course they were 10.95 for the opening weekend uh we have white gardenia and magnolia blossom which obviously is part of the hello beautiful fragrance and then we have the wild black cherries with the velvety red wine i was just like ooh, I don't know how this is gonna go yeah it's interesting because it's like a very hello beautiful is a very much like a uh sort of a uh, powdery feminine white floral type fragrance which I really enjoy because it has gardenia and magnolia in it and I think the full notes also have like jasmine in it so very much those beautiful traditional white floral perfume fragrance which I enjoy there's a bit of soapiness especially in hello beautiful isolated uh but then it's mixed with that sort of like cherry juice, um, almost like cough syrup type of cherry fragrance that we know from Black Cherry Merlot. And it comes off as a floral cherry fragrance, which we've been seeing a lot of cherry floral through like Sunset Glow and Sweetheart Cherry. So it kind of, not exactly, but kind of in a similar family as that type of fragrance. 
yeah, it just smells like a floral cherry fragrance. It literally smells like Hello Beautiful mixed with black cherry Merlot. I mean, it's pretty cut and dry. Uh, but we'll see if the interaction of the two uh, give us a nice cherry floral uh, and it merges well together when it's burning. So that was the first one right there. Uh, we then have In the Stars mixed with Honeycrisp Apple. Uh, that's what that looks like. I really love the gold and the red on there. Kind of very holiday-ish, honestly. Uh, we have Starflower and Sandalwood Musk, which is from the In the Stars. And then Honeycrisp Apple is your gold and honey crisp and apple blossom uh thick rope like wigs white wax on that one that's what that looks like this one's the weirdest yeah in the stars for whatever reason comes off very peppery and spicy and then it's mixed with a very just like generic red apple fragrance so mixing the apple with the peppery spiciness gives it almost like this red hot cinnamon like almost like a spiced apple gum like big red type of moment to it or like a, a apple juicy fruit if that exists it gives me like spiced apple gum vibes to it. I don't love it. Kind of weird. Uh, I was kind of hoping for more of like a perfumey body care apple fragrance, but the In The Stars just lends it to be more peppery and spicy. I don't know, we'll have to see. Yeah, In The Stars on Honey Crisp Apple, I can't say this is my favorite at all. <coughs> We then have Ocean and Vanilla Bean, which is another really strange one. So this is Ocean, like the men's Ocean that we have, uh, mixed with just the Vanilla Bean candle, which is like that sort of nutmeg gourmand uh, creamy vanilla fragrance to it. Uh, this is Blue Cypress, Coastal Air, and then Madagascar Vanilla Bean and Warm Cinnamon. Yeah, I don't know. Because Ocean is like a um, coastal aquatic men's fragrance, um, it usually, those type of like, uh, marine aquatic men's fragrances tend to have like a lime or a citrus presence to it to give it that sort of coastal feel. Um, and so what you're getting off of the ocean is like a citrus limey fragrance mixed with a like vanilla marshmallow. And so I think a lot of people have making comparisons to it being similar to cereal marshmallow bar and I can totally see that, but there's... Uh, too much of this, almost like a like a vetiver type of men's woodsy, um, almost like a um, underarm deodorant type of that sort of like slightly barber shop men's traditional fragrance exists in the ocean half that it just skews it enough where it's not fully gourmand. And so we do have the cereal marshmallow bar here, of course, and it's pretty much like a key lime pie fragrance, right? And when you smell this. This is so much more like full head on that sticky sweet sort of uh, like, you know, Fruit Loops, Tricks, Key Lime Pie, Marshmallow fragrance. This definitely goes way heavier on just the straight, off, straight up gourmand. Whereas when you smell this by comparison, you definitely get that like weird men's cologne vibe to it. So we have Ocean here, which I think was a Candle Day release and it was like totally, totally unscented. Blue Cypress, Vetiver and Coastal Air. Yeah. And you get more of that sort of like vetiver men's cologne vibe. Yeah, so it does smell like this indeed mixed with vanilla bean. Uh, but because the ocean is kind of like citrus leaning, it kind of gives you like a, uh, like if you had cereal marshmallow bar or like key lime pie marshmallow fragrance that happened to accidentally be spritzed with ocean cologne in the distance. Um, I don't know why they thought this would be an appropriate blend, but we will burn it and see how it does. But the vanilla bean does really come off as the same sort of like milky warm vanilla fragrance that we got in that Island Margarita plus vanilla bean blend. It reminds me of that same like vanilla base. So that was the ocean and vanilla bean. I don't know, just, it just seems totally unnecessary. I wish they would give us more just like awesome like bakery mashups. I don't understand, but I guess because these are supposed to be like top sellers, mixed with, so it's all supposed to be, okay, let's see, so let me analyze this. It's a body care fragrance as the top note, mixed with like a fruit slash gourmand as the bottom note. Yeah, so like for it to be, they don't have a lot of body care that's fully gourmand, right? Other than outside like strawberry pound cake or ice lemon pound cake, yeah. I mean, cause like if they would have done like a strawberry lemon pound cake fragrance, that would have been awesome, you know? But it seems like the first one has to be like a traditional body care fragrance. And so in that same realm, we have Plumeria, which is like a flashback. Um, 
Ugh, someone's mowing their lawn again for like the third time this week, so I apologize for the background noise. Uh, but in any case, um, Plumeria plus sugar lemon zest. So Plumeria is a throwback body care fragrance and they mixed it with sugar lemon zest, which is the same as Limoncello and uh, the Lemon Drops fragrance. Uh, that's what that looks like. And what's interesting is Plumeria has never come out isolated, standalone, in a three-wick candle. So it's like super exciting that we finally get Plumeria in a viable three-wick format, um, although it is blended with sugar lemon zest. Um, I think Plumeria comes out in a wallflower and the only way I've gotten wax of Plumeria is through like the four ounce tester back in the tester candle days. Um, and so I've gotten the wax as Plumeria there, but first time in a like three wick type of format. And so we have pink Plumeria, nine blooming jasmine, and bright lemon zest and fresh sugar cane. And I was super jazzed about this because Plumeria I love so much. It's probably my, one of my favorite throwback fragrances. It very much has that very traditional like smells like an actual Plumeria, but like a very sweet juice the awesome version of it and plenty of that like floral in there it's just like the most beautiful like hawaii evoking floral fragrance that i love so much and you get the plumeria in here and it's beautiful and then the sugar lemon zest gives it this sort of like sunny bright um like summer days type of uh brightness to it that i enjoy that it like kind of it, it is a supporting nice note to plumeria where like if you were maybe fully turned off by how floral plumeria was at least there's like a sugar lemon zest um, zesty fruit note in there just to sweeten it up and brighten it up. So I enjoy the blend of it. The caveat is, so my mother actually had already gotten this um, a few days ago because it was already out early in stores and she burned it and we burned it twice actually and it was rather light, like you could really hardly smell it. It was quite unfortunate because otherwise I would like probably back this one up because I love Plumeria so much, but the burn, burn or the throw performance on it was quite weak and like we, we then burned Danbury Shortbread right after it and like that was immediate throw amazing, but then this one was still quite weak. So uh, bummer on that because this is my favorite fragrance by far out of the blends. So that was Plumeria and Sugar Lemon Zest right there. <laughs> Moving on, uh, we have the other Bought for Sale collection, which has two new fragrances in it. And we have Velvet Amber Woods right here, and that's what that looks like. It's like a rectangular label and has white wax and the uh, silver lid on it. We have Fine Saffron, Lavish Jasmine, and Bright Amber. I believe this was in one of those single wig slash wallflower Nashville area test releases. And so it was out there, but this is the first, I believe, three wig release of it. And at least it's going wide for SAS, so that's kind of fun. Um, and you smell this, and it's just very familiar in a very much body care, bath and body works type of way. It's like sweet and warm and cozy, but there's still like this sort of peppery, uh, musky quality to it and it's very reminiscent for sure of In the Stars, uh, that whole ba Baccarat Rouge 540 type of fragrance, First Sight, you know, that family of fragrance which is not my favorite by any means. This is Bergamot Champagne, Night Blooming Water Lily, and Pink Salted Amber. And when you smell the two, they are indeed different. This one is a little bit more warmer and cozy in that sort of like cozy cashmere type of warm, juicy um, type of way, the amber in there for sure. I think the amber mixed with the jasmine kind of gives it that sort of cozy cashmere type of vibe to it. It's a warmer, less peppery, less harsh version of In the Stars. And when you smell In the Stars, you can definitely see that these are two different fragrances, but it's still a similar vibe for sure. It's just a little bit more warmer, sweeter, and cozier. Um, and because of that, I appreciate Velvet Amber Woods versus In the Stars. There's also something vaguely men's cologne-ish about this that gives me almost like slight mahogany teakwood vibes. Almost like if mahogany, almost like mahogany vanilla was mixed with In The Stars. There's like a slight cologne vibe to this that gives it a masculine edge to it, but not, not too bad. But for whatever reason, there's something in here that gives me a slight mahogany vibe to it. So Velvet Amber Woods right there. Still still enjoy it and we'll try it. Probably a one and done. But another Bath and Body Works body care fragrance is kind of how that comes off as. Uh, the other new one is Toasted Cinnamon Sugar and that's what that looks like. This one has like a wood grain lint on it for some reason. Um, warm cinnamon, brown sugar crumble, and sweet glaze. Thick rope like wicks, white wax. Um, extremely similar to pumpkin cinnamon bun. Definitely smells like an iced cinnamon roll fragrance. Smells like a Cinnabon in the mall. Um, or if you go to like a pizza buffet and they have like the, the icing drizzle like cinnamon pizza, the dessert pizza. Very much like that. And so it, you immediately go to like, is this just pumpkin cinnamon bun, you know? 
boy, they are really similar. I mean, this one's been burnt, so it has like a burnt, tarnished fragrance to it. And so, comparing it to these, these two, I can't quite give an honest comparison because this one's been burnt and used already. And so they don't smell exactly the same, but very, very, very similar, very redundant. It's just another um, iced cinnamon fragrance. Yeah, you get like a cinnamon icing and a warm um, sort of bakery component to it. Yeah, we'll have to see how this does. Um, it is not, unfortunately, cereal in cartoons, at least going off of memory. I freaking love that one. That one had a little bit more of this red hot cinnamon mixed with like a creaminess, and I really enjoyed cereal in cartoons. It's one of those that I wish I had another one of, but I do not. It is not cereal in cartoons. I would say pumpkin cinnamon bun is extremely similar to this. Um, and by association, kind of like sugar snickerdoodle, danberry, shortbread, that type of like basic bakery fragrance uh, is in there. But this one's obviously heavier on the, that like cinnamon vibe. Um, it doesn't quite smell like cinnamon spice vanilla or cinnamon sugar donut in the sense it doesn't quite have that like sort of greasy churro vibe to it. It's more pumpkin cinnamon bun for sure. I'll have to burn this one to see how different it is, but kind of, kind of like a pumpkin cinnamon bun um, sibling fragrance. So that was that right there. Uh, that one also had like hibiscus waterfalls, champagne toast, boring snooze feds, don't care about any of that. Um, mahogany rose, which I was hoping by the off slim chance it would be a different new fragrance, but it is not. It is indeed just a repackage of the Rosewater Ivy and Mahogany Teakwood blend. Um, and I guess instead of re-releasing that as a blend, they just put it in this collection and call it Mahogany Rose. Um, uh, I never cared for that one. I love Rosewater and Ivy, but mixed with Mahogany Teakwood, it was nasty. So I did not care for that one. So that one stayed there. And I think that concludes those two sort of like bought for sale collections. And then we have like the fun like... Is it like summer block party collection that kind of looks like a legitimate release that just happens to be coming out during the SAS floor set? Uh, and they like early released Firecracker Pop. And then we have the other three fragrances with us now. Um, and so there was Watermelon Lemonade. Don't need that. Firecracker Pop. Don't need that. And then that leaves us with my beloved freaking BWC. Girl, always in the mood for some BWC. Uh, Berry Waffle Cone right there. At first I was like, what are these hideous labels? But they have really grown on me. I love the metallic, um, treatment on it. And I just love the very, like, graphical, uh, look that this has. That, they, they actually grow, grown on me now. And I love, like, the bite marks and, like, the sort of, like, little peekaboo that they have going on with all the labels. Sweet Summer Berries, Golden Waffle Cone, and Creamy Vanilla. I think this is the first time we've had it in like this like very yellow <laughs> wax color. I don't know if that's what the natural color of the candle is or if there's yellow dye in there. Um, yeah, Berry Waffle Cone, we all know it. I've talked about it so much. Um, it's just amazing, it's awesome, I love it. I mean, Berry Waffle Cone is one of their masterpieces, like up there with your Pumpkin Pecan Waffles and Summer Boardwalk. Um, it has that sort of golden, crusty, buttery, like waffle cone type of crunchiness to it, mixed with a very much like brown sugar heavy baked berry fragrance that's like baked into it. And when you go to burn it, it lights up this most delicious buttery, like berry cobbler fragrance baking in the oven. But there's just so much heaps of this emphasis on that buttery golden crust. They friggin' nailed it. I love it. Berry Waffle Cone is just amazing. It's one of my favorite fragrances of all time from Bath and Body Works. And I love that it keeps coming back. Um, and I pretty much buy it every single year because I'm just, I just, I always get down with some BWC. So that's that right there. Uh, moving on, whipped coconut milkshake. I was like, oh my god, how fun is it to get a, like, actually new fragrance in the collection? And it was a previous body care fragrance, but now is in candle form. Um, and that's what that looks like. And it has the blue wax on it. Um, this has matching body care, right? Uh, I've never used the body care. I actually didn't even smell the body care in store, so I can't compare it to how the body care wears. Uh, but we have the candle. Vanilla ice cream, toasted coconut, and sugar to amber. Uh, this beautiful, like, light blue wax with thick rope-like wicks on it. I like this. Yeah. I thought this was going to be a little bit more generic or boring. And yeah, is it kind of similar to your frosted coconut snowballs and your snowy coconut frost? Absolutely. But I don't think it has, like, that sort of, like, minty coolness that that one has. That, you know, that iciness. I think this one, there is a warmer, almost like a, yeah, the coconut in there. You get, like, a, um... Yeah, warm, flaky coconut 
but there is just a hint of this um, like undeniable but also indescribable synthetic Bath & Body Works like body care undertone to it because it's coming from a body care fragrance into candle form that it's one of those where it's like it's whipped coconut milkshake and so you think it's full gourmand but there is indeed a body care presence underneath it that turns it into a Bath & Body Works body care fragrance and sometimes it's like frustrating or weird because when you come across fragrances like this that say that they're you know supposed to be a uh like gourmand fragrance like Coco Rosa chestnuts but then it turns into a body care perfumey fragrance you're just like what what is this weirdness but I guess at this point in time I've come to expect that or know that there's a possibility um that it's just like okay it's another one of those like gourmand beats body care fragrance from Bath and Body Works but yeah you get a creamy toasted coconut mixed with something a little bit like body care underneath it but I like it. Um, we'll have to burn it and see how it does. It's not quite as like full-blown milkshakey gourmand in a, you know, heavy foodie kind of way because there's a prettiness that comes from that sugar to amber. Yeah, I like it. We'll see. Whipped coconut milkshake right there. Uh, and I think that's it for the newness at SAS. Watermelon Lemonade was the other one, yeah. Um, okay. Now that's done, let us move on to um, other 1095 candles from just like this past season. And I was on the hunt for Bookloft and Greenhouse Fern. I'm aware that Bookloft is online, but I don't like paying shipping. And there's rarely any candle that I'm like, okay, I really need another backup of this one that I'm willing to pay shipping for. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, if I come across it in store in my journeys and I'm already there, I'll buy it, but not to the point I need to go buy one online. If that makes sense. And so Bookloft and Greenhouse Fern qualified for that category. And Greenhouse Fern, um, I did find that one. Um, and so we have it right here. Um, my mom bought one and I also bought one as well. So we actually have two in our possession right here. Um, this one, yeah, it is the one, if you've been watching my videos, I've been hemming and hawing over it. I bought it initially way back like last year. Um, December, I think. And then I was like, ooh, I don't know if I'm gonna actually burn this one. And so I actually exchanged it, but then I've kind of low-key regretted it ever since. And I always smell it and pick it up in store every single time. And I'm like, mm, I don't know if I need this. And then, so fast forward to finally now, like six months later, I'm like, okay, if I come across it in store, 10.95 plus 20% off, sure, let's do the thing. Uh, Greenhouse Fern. Lush Bergamot, Violet Leaves, and Jasmine Blooms. I think there's a whole camp of people saying this was unscented and ho-hum. And there's other people, I think I was reading a comment recently saying how they love Greenhouse Fern so much. So let's try it for ourselves. So yeah, beautiful William Morris inspired print on it. Love the aesthetic. This smells so much like the Elizabeth Arden green tea um, fragrance. If you've ever had that, it's like this body care fragrance. I think my mom used to have a perfume very much that floral green tea perfumey quality to it that I really enjoy. And that's probably why I like it and keep going back to it is because it's so nostalgic to that Elizabeth Arden green tea fragrance. Um, yeah, it's like a floral tea fragrance. It's pretty much how this comes off as. And it's absolutely beautiful. I really enjoy it. And there's like a greenness to it, a floral quality to it, and perfumey all in one. And probably because my mother also liked the Elizabeth Arden green tea, that's why she probably bought one too. So we have two greenhouse ferns right there. Excited to finally have that in my possession and just close that chapter of um, hemming and hawing over greenhouse fern. Um, closing that chapter in my life and moving on. So there was that. Uh, let's see. 75% off finds. Yeah, wow. That first store was loaded. I was like, do I need a Golden Bear Mistletoe for 75% off? But I think I still have have half of the last one that I was like, no, let me just buy one. And so me and my mom both got a 75% off the perfect autumn. And that's what that looked like right there. This was from last candle day. Um, I think I still have like a really old perfect autumn somewhere in my stash that I was like, I don't think I need this, but for $4.99, yeah, fall is upon us. Let me just get it. Fresh cranberry, spiced pumpkin, crisp apple, and rich clove. Um, that's what that looks like. I've had this and I've enjoyed it. It's like a spiced cranberry clove fragrance. You get heaps of a spiced cranberry and it's further spiced by clove. And that's sort of like pumpkin-y, um, like sweet cinnamon pumpkin. It's kind of like if sweet cinnamon pumpkin had heaps of cranberry in it. This is kind of how this comes off as. And it's a very quintessential, almost that sort of craft store potpourri type of experience. But I enjoyed it. It's like full bodied and robust. And it's just a nice autumn fragrance. Um, and for $4.99, heck yeah. Let me just get into it. So one for me and one for my mom, and that was that. 
Um, lastly, for candles, um, there was Alone the Perfect Spring, and my mom picked up and immediately loved it. So this was another $4.99 find right there, and that's what that looks like. Uh, spring Air, Fresh Grass, and Apple Blossoms. I'm not a fan of this one, although I do have to say if my mom didn't pick it up, I probably would have just picked it up myself just because it's like such a, I don't know, one hit wonder um, that I was like, for $4.99, you're willing to try uh, try some things. Uh, but yeah, she really enjoyed it. She liked how sort of like fresh and floral and clean it was. What I don't like about it is that it's like this perfumey grass that had like Old Bay sprinkled on it. It's just weird to me. And when I burned the first one way back when, when it first came out, it just had this weird like synthetic, made in the lab, artificial, fresh floral quality to it that I just was like, Egh. But I don't know, she enjoys it, so um, let her have it. <laughs> the perfect spring right there. And whew, that is it for the candles. Oh my God, I've been talking my ass off. Um, and then let us wrap up with the knickknacks, basically. I was hoping for a better hand soap deal. Uh, there's that very, very crisp thing that smells really great, but I just really don't want to spend 50% off on hand soaps unless it's particularly stellar. And there is one hand soap that is indeed particularly stellar, and it is friggin' rose and amber. Uh, I think this is getting canned or discontinued for this SAS, which breaks my heart because this is, I can like confidently say this is one of my favorite all-time favorite Bath & Body Works hand soap fragrances ever. It's this beautiful, like, floral rose perfumey mixed with this, like, like pillowy, marshmallowy, amber vanilla fragrance. It's just absolutely divine. Like, think of, like, marshmallow musk or vanilla musk, and they infused rose in it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's just absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, just bummed that this is, um, I guess, discontinuing. Yeah. And what's even more heartbreaking is now they have that... Ooh, the girl, this is, she's leaking all over the place. Um, okay, let's set that aside over there and clean that up later. Ooh, the leakage smells good, though. Uh, but in any case, I was super bummed because they have now started, like, taking some of those White Barn hand soap fragrances and turning them into pocket backs. And I was like, ooh, are we gonna get Rose Amber as a pocket back? No, because that clearly is discontinuing. So, bummer. Yeah, so there was that. Um, moving on, some other knickknacks. Um, they had a whole um, slew of these 75% off two-pack um, wallflower boxes at the first store. And so my mom wanted it turquoise waters. Um, I think this after coupon ended up being, it was 75% off, so it was $2.80 after coupon for this, meaning each bulb is only um, $1.40. Is that not crazy? I mean, it's like almost like they're giving this stuff away. Um, I've never opened these new paper boxes. Remember when they used to be plastic, but that's what they look like? Um, and then it looks like this, and they are actually individually, um, like, shrink-wrapped, um, so to prevent leakage. So, yeah, this is my first time, like, touching or interacting with these new cardboard boxes instead of the plastic ones. So, uh, yeah, and then the bottom just has all this information on it. Cool. Okay, um, let's see, what else? Um, 350 Wallflowers, my mother loves Plumeria, as do I, but she uses Wallflowers more, so she got two Plumeria, um, Wallflowers right there, bought for sale, Pink Plumeria, Peach Nectar, Red Apple, Night Blooming Jasmine, and Gardenia Petals. Wow, I mean, how often do they shove five notes on a fragrance these days? Uh, but they sure did it with Plumeria, so, two of those. Um, let's see almost got this for myself, but I was like, no, uh, but this was also 75% off, so it came out to be like a little less than $2 for the Tropidelic Shea Butter Cleansing Bar slash um, Bar Soap, and so my mother got that. Tropidelic is great, awesome solar floral type of fragrance. Um, she also wanted this Essential Oil Mist of the Rose Magnolia. Um, and that's what that looks like right there. Um, I think I enjoy this fragrance, but also I think it came out originally as was the Serenity, and it came out with Inspire, which was the violet one. And I love the violet one so much more than the Rose Magnolia one, because the Rose Magnolia one had almost like this plasticky quality to it, uh, but still a nice rose fragrance nonetheless. So sort of fresh at the same time. So she got this one to use. Uh, this was also 75% off. 
Lastly, just because for whatever reason, the out of this like new collection that they just released, Vacation Vibes, is 75% off. And so I was like, okay, let me just pick it up um, and add it to my wallflower collection that moves very slowly. Juicy Pineapple, Sugar Coconut, and Golden Orange, which I think is different from the Vacation Vibes that tested as the single wick collection in the Nashville area. Um, and this smells more similar to, if anyone remembers that old fragrance called South Beach Sun which had pretty much the same notes as this. I don't know if it's exactly the same, but very similar type of like tropical fruit, um, slightly sunscreen type of uh, vibe to it. I don't know, it's fun. Uh, it's new and it's 75% off, so there goes that. What I really enjoy the beach blanket one. I re really want that, but girl, I'm pumped paying full price for that. If that goes SAS, I will get that. And then I actually, I would pick up the poolside Cabana, Colada, whatever, and the Tropical Cherry Colada. Actually, I think I kind of want all four of them. I love how tropical and fun those fragrances are. If they eventually make it to sale, I will get those. But Vacation Vibes is 75% off right now, so snag that one up. And I think that concludes my Wappin' SAS haul. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to buy this much, but there was just a lot of newness. And then plus 75% off finds, like, yeah, it got me in. So, um, yeah, some of the prices were just crazy on it. Like $4.99 for a candle. Um, let's see. How much was that Vacation Vibes Wallflower was $159. Um, the new bought for sale candles, so the $10.95 plus 20% off brought them down to $8.76, which is like candle day prices. So yeah, really, if you had that 20% off coupon, um, yeah, it was a done deal. So that was pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know how your SAS treasure finds and hunting has been going. I'm like, pretty satisfied with my haul today. Um, I'll kind of like burn through these to see if I need backups of any of them, any of them, and then go from there. But yes, so anywho, thanks so much. Happy shopping, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.